What's going on you guys? Welcome back. So for today's video, I want to talk about the heater hoses that connect to the side of the water pump on these LS engines. And of course, getting that flow, um, that water flow to my heater core. Now when I built this car in the very beginning with the Reborn project, I built it with a 454 engine. And when I was building it, I wanted to make sure that it was a car capable of doing long cruises because it was a cruiser. One of the things that I definitely had to have was air conditioning and of course I wanted to retain the heat. This LS3 build, uh, the rebirth of the Reborn project, is no different. I definitely want to keep the heat and the air conditioning. So here's a look at my LS3 engine and let's show you what I got going on. So when I had the big block, the way it, 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 it was set up originally was I had the hoses and they came off, they bolted to the, um, the inner fender and they went towards the top of the engine where there were heater core connections, you know, right here on the top. Well, with the LS engine, the heater core connections is not on the top. It's actually towards the bottom. So we have here, there's the water pump down in there and you can see the water pump pulley. So that's the water pump. And let's see if we can get a look at the connections for the water pump or the heater core from the water pump to the heater core so there you go right there let's see if we can get you focused so we got there those those two connections right there um, is the heater core connection we got a 5 8 inch and we got a 3 quarter inch and the first problem I had was right there you can see how close that hose comes to the upper control arm mounting bolt. Now, you can see that I have space there. And that's because I found the perfect hose to fit in that area to give me the curve that I needed, maintain the size of the hose, which in this case was a three quarter inch, because that is the inlet side. The other one, right here that's the 5 8 inch side of the water pump and that's the feed line the 3 quarter inch side is the return line so i'm going to give you guys a look at all of the whole setups because i had to do some digging to get this list but this list will help you because you can take this list and choose the holes and length that you desire for your particular application. Okay, so you saw the list and now you have information on the hoses that you can possibly choose from to create the bends you need. So let's show you this side. So there's another look at the water pump outlets. So we got a 5 8 inch on the left and we got a 3 quarter inch on the right. And they go to this little device right here. And this is the star of this video. And that's an electronic bypass heater control valve. Let's see if we can get you guys a good look at it. So, so there it is right there. And obviously we have here, we got some wiring here. We got um, the two outlets that go into the firewall or towards the firewall to my vintage air unit. And then we got the two inlets which are down here and you can see them here. We got a three quarter, we got a five eighth inch. And they're the, they go into the bypass valves. Now, the five eighth inch is the feed. The three quarter inch is the return. So the way this bypass valve works, and this is the beauty of it. It will allow fluid to go into my heater core and it will also block the fluid from going into the heater core. Why is that important? Well, it's important because um, from the research I've done, you cannot block off 
the LS3 uh, or the, basically in any LS, you cannot block off those ports. And I know there are some people that would do it. Uh, you can buy a U hose that will go in a loop so you can loop those two connections. And I'll include a part number for that in the description box in case you wanted to do the loop. But I wanted to make sure that I had heat and cooling. So I wanted to have the ability to loop those and at the same time have the ability to unloop them and get the water to go into the heater core. So to elaborate, if I wanted to just make sure that my heater core inside the cabin never received hot water with this, with the turn of a switch, I can shut that off and the water would come into the bypass valve and right back out. That's the beauty of this uh, bypass valve. If I wanted the flow to go into the cabin with the turn of a switch, I can allow the fluid to go. So it would come out the engine, come up this hose right here, go into the uh, heater core, then come right back out and then go straight to my engine again. As you can see, we got my hoses. And with that list that I provided earlier, you can see that I was able to choose the perfect hoses to get me that bend so that I have a clean looking setup. So now I'm gonna post up a couple pictures when I was you know, setting this up so you can get an idea of how it was uh, built because this heater control valve or the heater control bypass valve is attached to my inner fender and you can see here the bracket there and you see my button screws that hold this to the inner fender and you can see there it is the other side and basically what I had to do in a nutshell was I had to take this apart take this off and there's uh, three screws so I took this off and then there's a plate a metal plate um, under this and I took that metal plate and welded my own bracketry and you can see there to it so that I can actually attach this unit this whole unit to my inner fender to hold it in place so here's the part number for the unit I purchased right here I'm showing the unit in action so basically I'm just twisting a knob and showing how the little door works inside the unit filled it up with water and it's holding water. So now I'm gonna open the valve. Now here's the unit in my hand and I'm gonna show with the use of colors how the coolant flows. So right here, the little yellow door goes back and forth. And over here, the coolant is, is set in the mode to loop from the engine to the engine and illustrated by the red arrows it just basically hot water comes from the engine and goes right back into the engine and then with this illustration I'm showing that the coolant from the engine is going into the heater core and then illustrated with blue arrows that's coolant coming from the heater core going right back to the engine installation portion of the heater control bypass valve in my Nova's engine bay. Now, there was two reasons for doing this. The first one was the LS water pump. It is said that the LS water pump has to have constant flow with the way it's designed. And so I wanted to ensure that I had constant flow. Now, you can just loop the two lines, the two nipples between the two, and as I stated earlier, a part number for that is gonna be in the description box below. 
but I didn't want to just loop them. I wanted heat in my car. So this valve provided me the solution to the LS water pump and to bring heat into the uh, cabin by allowing the water to go into the heater core. Now, why don't I just have the water flow all the time into the heater core if I wanted heat? Well, I have AC and with the vintage air system, the heater core and the cooling core for the AC are inside this vintage air box. And so they're pretty much right next to each other. So if I have heat flowing into the heater core at all times, then my AC is not gonna be as cold as it could be because you have a heater, the heater core, right next to the cooling core, which is where the, the AC uh, charge is going through. And we don't want that. Well, at least I don't want that. I want my AC cold when I want my AC. And when I want my heat, well, now I have the option of, you know, doing both. With the simple turn or twist of a knob, I can turn on and off the water flow going into the cabin. And why did I go electronic? You don't have to go electronic. There's versions of this uh, bypass valve that you can purchase. I just wanted total control with just the turn of a knob. But there's also the original version, which I'll show a picture here. Um, and I'll link a part number in the description box below. And there's also a cable operated version, which again, a photo here. And there's two versions of the cable operated version and both part numbers will be in the description box below. So there you have it. That's the, the setup for the engine bay. But in the next video, I'm gonna be covering the installation portion of the electronics basically the wiring that goes from the bypass valve that's in the engine bay into the cabin in a place where I can easily access it and at the same time hide it away if I don't want to see it. So stay tuned for the next video and if you don't want to miss it, hit that subscribe button and also don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you get notified when I upload that video because it will be part two to this installation because this is a two part um, install for this system and of course hit the like button because it helps out the channel greatly if you have any questions you know or comments put them in the comment section below but also you can communicate with me on instagram in the description box below there's a link to that instagram page as well you can say hi to me you can follow me i do post pictures once in a while and i also give hints when i'm gonna you know drop a video and as always Hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching. See you on the next one.